it's already started. Oh, we're going. Yeah. We're going. Yeah. Hey, internet shit. Yeah. Hey, internet. Love it. I'm Chaz. And I'm Dan. Welcome to Wine is Serious Business, episode 375. We're pumped to be back. We're pumped to have a guest. We're pumped to have Barnaby Tuttle from Teutonic Wine Company back. This is the first time we've done a show with a guest in a long time. Long time. <laughs> Thanks, Barnaby. What brings you here today? My friends. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, it's been good. Old wines, old times. It's the first time we've done this since, geez, like 2013, 20... It's something been, like that. It's been a decade. It's yeah. been a little bit. <laughs> and we were just talking, like, when, when Wine is Serious Business was, was really going strong, uh, this was like the 2009s, 2010s. This is the stuff that's for sale. And, uh, and, and, and Barnaby and, and Olga have been digging some old stuff out of the cellar. Uh, some wines of those vintages. They they thought like let's talk about let's talk about some wines from the cellar. And I was like, Chaz and I love to talk about Oregon wines from the cellar. Absolutely, yeah. We've been drinking a lot of those ourselves lately, and yeah, with it, it, obviously with jumping an opportunity, wanted to hang out with you guys again, but too to yeah, check in on some of your older cool. vintages. So let's get into it. Yeah. So so we're gonna start here with the, this is the the 2011 Pinot Gris. It's a very uh, stone stone bridge vineyard. What? Yeah, uh, and, and it's kind of fun. Ten point nine percent alcohol, right? So even for a white wine, real low alcohol, right? Cool climate, not. And a lot of people let Pinot Gris get really ripe and heavy. Not mm -hmm. you. Well, and I think it's also the vintage. My, yeah. You know, going back when we could have white wines that were ten or even single digit, it just I love that stuff. <laughs> I, I don't feel noticed, but the planet's burning up. Yeah, there's uh, forest fires and there's smoke. Well, this is a wine that harkens back to a time before that. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having us. Thanks so much. Thanks for the, having me. The color on this thing is just ideal, man. It looks like it's a you know current current release. Right? Yeah. Like, and, and 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 this is kind of a fun point too. They mentioned that their storage for this has been in the basement of their house, which in Portland, Oregon, you can get away with. A lot of parts of the country, there's no way. Yeah. Uh, I was really nervous about it myself. I keep some wine in my basement because uh, it's a mild climate. Just that little bit of insulation keeps things pretty stable. And this is the real proof, right? Your white wines, if they are aging prematurely, they get real dark real fast. They start losing a lot of character. I think the structure here is in really good shape. It's in such good shape. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking maraschino cherry. Yeah. But, palate, but, yeah. but dry. Dry maraschino cherry. The, the aroma here is really light, right? Like, uh, but but it's got almost like a floral aspect to it, like, uh, and then also also like, I'm, I'm struggling here. It's not like like the, it's, it's like huge, cherry. Right? It's like a very like like again maraschino, and there's something. It's like a type of candy. Um, hmm. Like that rice candy when I was a little kid. That paper candy that I think is Japanese. Hmm. This is a flavor yeah, I don't yeah. know, but this, yeah. is, this is why it's fun to have you on. Um, and, and, Janet, and Janet used to give me those back when I was a little kid. Yeah, if you're, if you're listening and know, uh, know what candy he's talking about, say something in the comments. Yeah, that's that's the, fun I, to hear. I can actually see the cherry you're talking about. Sake, too. I can see that. Oh, Stand and this out. wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we, we do all wild ferments. Mm -hmm. There was a thing going on with the yeast. And I've talked to, hey, Wolfgang. <laughs> that dog showed up. Yeah, that dog's in the show. Yep. Yeah, yeah. He's the star. Um, <laughs> there were like little balls of yeast, like little communities. They'd float around. Whoa. And it looked like they were swimming. And I talked to people, and it is some sort of like anomaly that happens, but it scared the crap out of me. Seeing these little balls of, I didn't know what the fuck it was, yeah. moving around. So and this was in the, it's like colder vintages, like eleven. You're saying? Well, or? I've only seen it in this wine. Oh, in this wine. Wow. I've never heard of it before. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. Maybe that's why it's like sake. Maybe it's koji or something. So cool. And so you asked around, and somebody finally was like, "No matter, they it's said, fine." They, like, they, yeah. yeah, they said. And I think this might have been the wine that I um, I did the ETS um, um, yeast genum mm -hmm. on it. And so they, so three of the oh, yeah. four dominant yeasts in this were unknown, uncategorized. Okay. That's because incredible. a lot of people say, oh, you think you're doing the Pied de Couve and wild yeast, but it's all isolated yeah. yeast gone feral in the, in the winery. And um, no. Not this one. Three of the four. Yeah. Let's move into wine number two now. This is the, uh, the 2009 Pinot Noir from Alsi Vineyard. 
Um, for folks who don't know, why don't you why don't you tell them a little bit about what the Alsi Vineyard is? Alsi Vineyard is west of the Willamette Valley, so it's coastal, uh, west slope of the Coast Range, possibly the coldest vineyard in the state. Okay. Probably one of the coldest vineyards in the country. Probably. Um, it was a huge risk when we planted it. We really honestly didn't know what we are doing. And, you know, now that things are warmer, we pick it in late October. We used to pick it in November. And this is 09. I'm going to guess this is picked around Halloween in 09. Wow, which is one of the hottest vintages wow. that... that yeah, that yeah. since we've been into wine, one of the hottest vintages we've seen. Um, so it's really fun to try something from one of the coolest, yeah, probably the coolest site in, in, in Oregon uh, and see how that behaves in a hot vintage. Oh my God, it's like bouillon and menthol. <laughs> you got those. This is so much fun to taste with you. It's yeah. really cool. It's, it's the like menthol really characteristic is absolutely there. Meaty. Yeah. Oh man, like you're dead on. Like and demi. Oh my gosh. But then it has like minty, lifted, like volatile, herbaceous. Oh my god! It reminds, dead on. reminds me of a little bit like those menthol cherry coffee like drops. Like the world's best toothpaste. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Maybe I should <laughs> make toothpaste. <laughs> what do you think, Olga? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh my god, I love this. The the bouillon you talked about totally comes through on the palate. It's it's really surprising. It's a mommy bomb. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it it blends with like really ripe strawberry fruit. Um, still good acidity. It's a fantastic blend, and I think that's a good example of the kind of flavors that come out with this kind of aging, too. Um, man, and something built with this acidic style, it really, it really holds up so well. And I also have to interject that being not over-extracted, mm -hmm. being 100% neutral oak, mm -hmm. I think this mm -hmm. puts it more to where, if somebody likes Burgundy. Sure, sure. Or Northern Italian wines, as opposed to... You know, if you're looking for a big Willamette Pinot Noir, that's great. I love those wines. Mm -hmm. But this is a luxury wine, but it beckons of a different calling. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And, and it's what Chaz and I have always loved about your wines is that you've really got a unique touch uh, to, to uh, everything in your lineup. Yes. And it's really fun to see how that stuff ages, right? We love some of the wines you make, you know, Im immediately on release. They're a lot of fun young. Uh, but with that, with that... It's great to see that light acidic character uh, last through this many years, without without losing flavor, without really falling apart. Um, and it, and it, it, I mean, it really speaks yeah. to the high quality fruit, high quality winemaking that that you put into it. Absolutely. And I think this is why mm. I make wine. You know, when I when you know our friend Ava Mosler. That's yeah. when I realized I wanted to do this, and he showed me as a wine buyer papa hayden and i called him in and he showed me 14 mosel rieslings mm. and one of them was a christoffel it was a 79 amazing and here we go you know you my birth year. <laughs> what our birth year both yeah, of yeah. you guys yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah cool. <laughs> um yeah. babysitting here um 67 obviously <laughs> summer of love all right um, but, but but anyway you know, like a seventy-nine Riesling, it's in, a, and I think in these times as a human being, being wrong about preconceived ideas, when you think something is the way it is, and you realize there's more to it than this, and the world is more complicated than I can see it, and without wine, told me that not only it's not just red wines that can age. But white wines, and that wine hit me on, a, on an emotional level, yeah. an intellectual yeah. level, and it just bulldozed, it just destroyed all these ideas I had, and I'm like, oh my God, I need to make wine. And not only do I want to make wine, I want to make wines that can age, and someday I want to taste my wine when they have age. And that's why this is a profound moment. I'm finally able to sit with my friends and taste my wines getting kind of old. That same experience, it's like an echo. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's got to be so exciting, like you did it. Because nobody knows for sure how your wine's going to age when you're making it at the time. And, and here it is, right? Yeah, and you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's 
for me, so powerful, so profound. Is this what we're drinking now? Yeah, Pinot Meunier is coming next, yeah. So again, 2009, um, what's there to say about this? Uh, which, which vineyard is this? Borgo this Pass. Borgo Pass. So, old, ungrafted Pinot Meunier. The reason I make it is I was trying to make a Schwarz Riesling, yeah, yeah. which is what it's called in Germany. It, it, it's a really neat guy, really cool vineyard. Um, East Slope Coast Range, by the way, it's only seven and a half miles from Alsi. Okay. As the crow flies. As the flies. crow flies. But how long does it take you to drive from one to the Almost other? Almost an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And the soil is super iron rich. And you get this bloody, rusty, iodine flavor. And, you know, I tried all these different foods with it. My favorite pairing was a pheasant. Cool. And that's why we had the pheasant on the label. Hmm. Nice. Oh, so the, it's Borgo Pass inspired the pheasant that's been with you for it all this time. Borgo Pass inspired it. the pheasant. Awesome. And you just get that bloody iodine. -y. Wow. The iron character I can see on the nose. Definitely yeah. some darker fruits, but it is more earthy, more mineral on the nose than, mm -hmm. than you know, fruity, friendly in your face. Yeah. Right. And this, when, this, when this was first opened and I tasted it, it was like more like bright cherry fruit. Now that cherry fruit is like way darker. Like very, very ripe, but like darker mm -hmm. tone behind the earthy characteristics. Pinot Meunier is one of the most underrated grapes. Hmm. And, you know, the proof is in the pudding. And in Germany, it used to be, after Pinot Noir, the most, the second most common red, red wine. Hmm. It was called Schwarz Riesling or mm -hmm. Mule Rebe, like Miller's Grape. And I think in a good vineyard site with some age and serious earnest winemaking, it can taste like this. And and what is different about the winemaking here compared to your Pinot Noir? Anything or, or is it, not a damn yeah, thing? I love it. Okay. <laughs> and, and I'm not bigger That's than amazing. terroir. I'm not bigger than vintage. I'm not bigger than the grapes. I pick the fruit when it's right to pick. I don't use any cold soaks, any enzymes. I don't add color. When you see my Pinot and it's light colored, that's because that's a color it actually is. I love it. And and I want the wine to be, I want to be honest. I want the wine to show as the terroir. That's why you only use neutral oak. One thing I've always appreciated about your red wine making too is that you don't, you're not afraid to let the alcohol be low. Right, you never capitalize, bring things up, bring them up to 12, 5, 13 or something to like fit some sort of average or status quo. The whole reason I like fell in love with your winemaking to begin with was that 2010 battle wine, right? It was like- Nine something. Was, was, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was super low alcohol and I loved it. It was like- But it dispelled the myth. Like, it was don't awesome. don't need yeah. to have yeah. alcohol to have finish. Yeah, it was awesome. I certainly don't want to be hurtful, but if people, are chasing ripeness too hard, it becomes like a dangerous fortune cookie. Perhaps they may find it. And and for me, I was chasing the coldest. I remember. I remember. Scariest. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Wettest. I remember that guy. <laughs> and, and, and so maybe that's an advantage. And, and, and I think again, it's try, you're trying to turn poetry into a commodity. And if you try and turn poetry into a commodity and you're chasing excess, it, it may turn out to be a curse. Especially now the f***ing planet's on I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm not no, 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 no. You can cuss. But, yeah. No, I'm not afraid of cussing, but I'm afraid of going to talking about how sure. the right. climate in the world's in peril. Sure. That's And, and now... The vineyards that I look for, the vineyards we planted, now are probably warmer than the vineyards that I would have ran from in 09. Sure, sure. And we're doing the best we can to compensate for it, but you mm -hmm. know, yeah. It's well, now you're going to get your 13.5, right? <laughs> we have, and yeah. I'm ashamed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gotta pick these soon. But when we got 13.5, <laughs> the guy was 16 to 8 was using mm -hmm. a garden hose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, so the last one we've got here is the Ooh. 2013 Medici Vineyard Riesling. 
but this is the dessert wine. So let's go for it. Yeah. All right. Here. So. Twenty thirteen was an interesting vintage. A lot of people didn't like it because for red wines, I feel there was there was a huge rain event. We we had eight inches of rain in four days. That's wild. And and right after a big heat spell too. So yeah, it's just split the grapes, right? Like exactly. And and hey, wolves, what's up, buddy? But the white grapes, oh my god. And my friend Alan Mitchell, who, who manages Crow Valley, mm. he goes, Barnaby, this is glorious. Mm. You will only see a couple of vintages like this for white wine in your lifetime. And I'm like, mm. okay, guys, we're not taking any white fruit. No white fruit's coming in until we're right against the rain. Sure. So after that rain, we had three weeks of Botrytis concentrating the flavors. And I think this came in, the Medici, at 33 bricks. So that's what I'm smelling. It's that's Botrytis? It's Botrytis, It's yeah. Botrytis. I was like, there's there's something going on here. <laughs> but it, this is as close as I've made to a Mosley. Yeah, it that's really awesome. is. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got the light, bright fruit and a little a little of that darker, spicy but yep. And it's really a little bit of that mustard. It's a half right bottle, now. which half bottles eat twice as fast. This is a 2013. And that color is still like pristine. Fine, yeah. 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 This wine has another 20 or 30 years left. I totally believe it. Yeah, but right. I was sitting there kind of doubting myself. <laughs> it was, it's funny. Yeah. Oh man, oh man, this is so good. <laughs> wow. <coughs> so we were talking before that that, that, that you, you've been putting some of these older wines up for sale uh, recently. <coughs> I assume these are gone, right? The Medici's gone. Oh, oh no, there's a few bottles. Wow. Okay. Mm. I mean, it, 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 it tastes like it's three vintages out. It doesn't even taste. No, like it doesn't even taste that old. I'm getting a hint of mushroom too now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that like uh, that that sort of mushroomy kind of musty aroma, absolutely comes through a little bit in the nose and in the palate. Yeah. Kind of where I was like, what's going on here, right? Oh man. Botrytis. Yeah. Honey, apples, cherries, delicate, right? Honey, you know, this twenty is years when like we get back together wines. again. Yeah, we'll yeah. take another one. <laughs> Y'all take it at your hairline. Yeah. <laughs> I won't have any. I'll still be dyeing any. my hair brown, but yeah, yeah, but you'll still have it. You still, yeah. No, okay. it's no, just, it's going away. Okay. But whatever little bit I have, I'll still dye yeah. brown. Um, and we'll bring this wine out, and we'll probably be saying, mm, "Well, when we're in nineties, let's try it again." I, 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 I hope I hope you get to bring a bottle to Harold at some point because uh, I, I think he'll really get Oh, I miss him so much. Yeah. So another thing, we had two barrels of this wine. And when we made wine out in the countryside, I would take the barrels outside to arrest fermentation. Oh, yeah, keep, keep cool them off, yeah. And it got down to, I think, 12. We had a really... Crazy cold snap. Sure. And I was worried about it freezing and breaking the barrels. Mm -hmm. And I went out there. <clears throat> as soon as it got up into the 40s, this wine started fermenting again. Hmm. Which is crazy. With that kind of RS, it, it finished at almost 9%. It's 8.7. Okay. But I couldn't believe it was fermenting again in the 40s <laughs> with wild yeast. They're right where just they wanted to be. We were just really yeah. excited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was excited. just like we are excited. Yeah. They, were, they were having a good. They were having a good time. Yeah. Whoops, what's up, buddy? So, so yeah, so that's really cool. Uh, thanks so much for coming out uh, and sharing these wonderful wines with us. Um, a lot of their, the, you know, they got got a few bottles from a lot of their back catalog for sale. So send them an email. The uh, email address and links and stuff are going to be uh, in the show below. See what they've got. They can uh, they can they can ship some bottles out to you, or stop by their stop stop by the tasting room, right? 
What's the, what's the best day? What's the best day to stop by the tasting? We'll room? send out emails. To okay. Our, yeah. So sign up if you want to get an email. Thanks, guys. Yeah. No, thank, thank you uh, for having us. <laughs> you guys are the best. Like, yeah, thank like, you for having us. Like, back when I was young, we used to do this. It was it's been yeah. so long. And I oh, miss man. you guys. This is, you're the best. Yeah, thank it's you. been great to see you. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. So yeah. Much yeah. We miss doing us. shows, yeah. too, so we're really, glad, we're really glad we got to get back together and do this. Yeah, absolutely. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. we'll see you guys next time.